Hello everybody and welcome to Melchester Model Railway. Today I'm focusing on one of the most imposing buildings on my layout, the brewery. A Metcalf Models card kit, sadly no longer available in their range, but an excellent model nonetheless. And the most diminutive loco in my collection, the Hornby Ruston 48 DS Shunter. And I'll be looking at the privately owned siding just beyond the BR goods shed, where the shunter Queen Anne lives and operates. Our story, however, begins out in the beautiful English countryside, out in the fields surrounding Melchester, an area rich in agricultural farmland. It's harvest time and Farmer Barlamo is harvesting a field of ripened barley which is destined for the brewery in Melchester. Sacks of barley are placed onto a flatbed lorry and driven to the brewery. Large scale commercial brewing took hold during the 19th century with the establishment of mechanical industrial productions. In order to feed this growing industry, large malt houses and purpose-built breweries were created, often close by or with access to the railway. In 1834, the number of commercial breweries producing over 10,000 barrels per year was 134. By the 1850s, this had doubled, and by the 1870s had trebled. The 20th century brought decline in the wake of two world wars and a depression. The Metcalf Brewery is based on the tower style steam brewery of the late 19th century. It makes an interesting subject for the modeller as the external buildings are arranged in the form of a vertical tower, often involving elements of architectural whimsy. This tower form allows the multi stage process to continue by the use of gravity once the bulk materials water barley and malt are raised by steam engine to the top floor the buildings of a tower brewery are arranged as a tower with five or six floors there may be a single tower but many breweries were less regular with portions reaching various heights only relatively small areas were needed for the highest floors. The highest point would be a small water tower. Water is pumped up to this cold liquor storage tank, liquor being the term for the water that will become beer. The next highest level would be a prominent ventilated attic, giving good airflow for coolers. The louvered roof and side vents indicate this area on the Metcalf model. The second main ingredient in beer is barley malt. This is malted in a malt house outside the brewery tower. This is the building that you can see here on the left of the Metcalf model. Barley is hoisted to the top floor of the building using a sack hoist enclosed by the external wooden housing you can see on the front of the building. 
The barley is spread out on a large floor and the germination process is induced to create malted barley. The malted barley is then transferred across to the Tower Brewery via this walkway bridge. From here the malted grains are dropped into a grist mill on the floor below. The grist mill crushes the grains to open their seed coat and allow good extraction of their contents. The grist is then passed to the floor below where it is mashed with hot liquor in a mash tun to extract the starchy components and maltose sugars. This produces a liquid called wort which then runs down to the brewing coppers on the first floor. These are gradually heated and hops are now added as the temperature is raised to boiling point. The spent hops are decanted into a vessel on the ground floor and then removed for use in farming. At this stage the liquor is pumped back up to the top floor attic into large tanks for cooling. All the power for the pumping, mechanical and heating processes of the brewery are provided by a steam engine housed in this boiler room. Once the liquor has cooled it flows back down to the first floor and is deposited in fermenting tuns where yeast is added and left to ferment for around a week. The large area needed to ferment several brews simultaneously often extended into the building next to the tower. Finally the beer from the fermentation vessels is returned to storage on the ground floor below where it is filtered and stored before being placed into barrels. The barrels are then prepared to be dispatched by rail. The brewery is ideally placed for access to the mainline railway and is served by its own siding that runs into the brewery grounds. The brewery owns and operates its own small industrial diesel shunter, a Ruston and Hornsby 48 DS named Queen Anne, built in 1948 to a prototype design dating back to 1935. It's an engine that formerly worked at a distillery before coming to the brewery in Melchester. This locomotive is ideal for the sharp curve and cramped conditions in the brewery yard and occupies very little space. The Hornby model was released in 2019 and owing to the extremely short wheelbase of the four-wheeled locomotive, Hornby provided a permanently attached conflat wagon with additional electrical pickups. This helps to minimise issues caused by dirty track or insole frog points. Some modellers have detached the conflat wagon and fitted the loco with a stay alive unit. However, I've discovered that with clean track and wheels and the use of electro frog point work, the model runs very well indeed without the necessity of having the permanently coupled conflat wagon attached. In this next part of the video we're going to see Queen Anne at work. A privately owned Allsops beer van has been deposited in the British Railways goods yard and Queen Anne will now collect it and bring it into the brewery for loading with beer barrels. This will then be shunted back into the yard to be collected later by a pickup goods train.
The workers at the brewery prepare to load the now full beer barrels into the van, ready for it to be shunted into the goods yard to await the arrival of the pickup goods train. Oh look, here comes the goods train on the main line, hauled by a 700 class locomotive. train pulls into the platform at Melchester where it will have to wait for a few minutes before it can reverse into the goods yard. Meanwhile, over in the goods yard, Queen Anne is reversing the loaded beer van onto some wagons already in the goods shed. These will form part of the pickup goods train. Queen Anne will now make her way back to the brewery. As fair as a lily, 
as brown as a bun. The goods train has backed into a siding so that the brake van can be uncoupled. The other vans, including the Allsop's beer van, are added to the train. It then can move forward to reattach the brake van. The makeup of the goods train is now finally complete, including the consignment of beer from the brewery, and the train can now proceed on its way. As the sun sets on the ripening fields of barley around Melchester, where our beer journey began, the goods train passes Farmer Barlimo's cottage and gives him a hoot. It's been a long hot day for Farmer Barlimo working in his barley fields, so he heads out of his cottage down to his local, the Duke of York, for some well-deserved refreshment. And his choice of beverage? A pint of beer produced from his own barley and brewed locally here in the Melchester Brewery. <laughs> 